the surround sound. Have you beaten that game? All right, uh, three, two, one, have I, go. Have I beaten this game? I've never nope, nope, it. nope, time out. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Everything is unbound for God knows what reason. We're gonna try this one more time. Okay, we're good. All right, three, two, one, go. All right. So anyway, this is uh, I want to be the Bashi. It's a precision platformer with some pretty tough bosses. It's a very difficult game overall. You might have seen it before. I've been running it for about six months straight. <laughs> it's pretty much most of what I do. So this run is going to have deaths in it. Every run has deaths in it of this game. But just know that myself, Broman, Matty Ice, and about 25 people from my stream are donating a dollar for each death that I get. So if you see me start dying, you might be thinking, this guy's terrible. But no, I'm helping. <laughs> I'm saving the world. So that's, that's why I die. I die for the doctors. But this is World 1. It's based off a DOS game called Prehistoric 2. There's not too much. It's very standard. Uh, the little blue balls I'm grabbing are double jump replenishers. They give me triple, quadruple jumps. And another thing you're going to see me doing a ton is saving and restarting immediately. What that does is it resets the global timers on the... Okay, the music just kind of... That's a problem. <laughs> That's something I have to fix. Don't worry, I'll just keep the timer going. So anyway, <laughs> that, uh, that trick resets global timers on everything throughout the game and allows me to do some setups that make it so I don't have to slow down while I'm running through. Now, this game does have a few jump scares. Uh, they're, they're a little loud, but don't worry about it. That, that's the last one, I swear. <laughs> I didn't warn, uh, it's coming up 10 seconds ago, you're good. So the first boss is Hello Kitty. I don't know what she's from. I think, I think she's an original character. And what I'm going to try and do is, you know, hit her with all my bullets. The quick kill is actually very difficult, but I've been doing it for a long time, so it'll probably be okay. I lied. Everything's terrible. <laughs> Sorry, one sec. I'd love, to, I'd love to stay in chat, but I just I need a moment here. One HP. That's really unfortunate. I have to wait for this uh, bullet health to go because if I don't, it'll go infinitely when I kill her. Usually you kill her before it starts. So that's the first world. Pretty simple. The next world is based off of Kirby. Well, uh, the next world is based off of the Kirby series of games. There's definitely no jump scares in it, I promise. Uh, these jumps really are going to help the doctors out quite a bit. You can die a ton there without actually losing any time. It's just the nature of that room. I only died twice, which is perfectly reasonable. I hope my keyboard's not too loud. So anyway, this game just in general is just really, really hard. I'm sure you've seen it around Twitch. Everything's going fine so far, but it gets harder and harder as we go along. Sorry, it's, it's kind of hard to talk and do some of these parts. That's one for the doctors. So, um, World 2 is very straightforward. You can actually read some donations during this. All right. There is a little mini boss coming up, but there's only one thing I have to explain about that. Everything else is very straightforward. All right, thank you. So, we have a $100 donation from Easy8 saying, uh, more money for the cars. Uh, for the cars. The runs have been great, and MSF deserves all the love we can send. So hype for Whitwick's destruction of Boshi and the rest of the great runs coming up. Thank you. Thank you, Easy8. We got fifty dollars uh, from uh, Silamando. Saying shout out to Whitwick's and all the amazing people on the couch. You're awesome. SGDQ is awesome, and chocolate cake is also awesome. Another fifty dollars. If Bro if Broman yells, hack the planet. Hack the planet. <laughs> If you haven't seen Hackers, I would, I would get on that right now. Actually get out of this stream and go watch Hackers. There's, there's nothing for you here. So the only thing I wanted to talk about in Krakow is at the very beginning, I did a fully extended double jump and shot him twice. That allows me to kill him on the bottom left here, which saves about five seconds. He goes invincible when you do enough damage. 
But if you damage at the very beginning of the fight, he doesn't go invincible. So it allows me to kill him much earlier in the fight than I would be able to otherwise. The um, save points might sound like they're cursing, but they're they're actually saying fun, yeah. So everything's fun, fine. Yeah. They just love fun. <laughs> <laughs> everything's fine. <laughs> everything's fine. Just don't even, don't even pay attention to that. So I was supposed to go down by that Waddle D and get him to blow open the wall there, but you can actually do a series of save jumps to get over it. That saves another five or six seconds. It's kind of annoying to get used to. You can technically jump over this giant Kirby, but it's frame perfect and RNG based, and it's just not worth it at all. That's okay, he doesn't come twice. Oh yeah, he does. So, uh, <laughs> it's, the, the Kirby skip is the most, like the final trick. We would need a setup for it. It's kind of RNG based due to his arm movement. So we just kind of leave that alone for now. Next up is the King DDD mini boss. He is probably the toughest quick kill in the game to three cycle him. I have to hit him 30 times on the first cycle perfectly. And let's face it, I'm, I'm terrible, so. Okay, so I hit him 30 times. Uh, I have to do it two more times though, two more perfect cycles. Okay, this actually went pretty well. I think I might be able to get it. Two HP. Oh well. <laughs> That's okay. It's only a few seconds. I just like to three cycle him. Yeah, it was two HP. I was close, but that happens. Next up is the World 2 actual boss, which is Meta Knight. It's a pretty standard fight. No, it's actually not Meta Knight at all. He's dead already. <laughs> he got killed by Ryu. <laughs> the actual boss. So Ryu is, of the bosses, there's actually two bosses from Street Fighter. He's my second favorite, probably. You'll see the one later in the, in the game. But this is a pretty tough fight for a first time player because of the really hard later phases in the fight. But what I'm gonna do is just kill him. That way I don't ever have to see those ever again because they're just horrific. Okay, so he was about to do a whole bunch of just horrible things to me. But you can just mash him down. I've been blessed with the ability to mash, thankfully. Or this would be a very hard game. <laughs> That's World 2. World 3 is based off Cheetah Man. If you haven't played Cheetah Man, also get out of here and go do that. No, it's, it's awful. I'm lying. There's the actual Cheetah Man making an appearance. So this level has a ton of the hardest obstacles in the game due to the fact that the three Cheetah Men rooms that you'll see in a moment are kind of RNG heavy and just terrible in general. So hopefully we can just cruise through those, but they can be kind of a just really unpleasant thing to deal with. You're welcome, Dr. Zup orders. So I got a good pattern here. I think not really. This guy has about 15 different patterns. That's fine though. This is the real problem because sometimes he just spawns extra arrows that are guaranteed to kill you. Luckily I just kind of went through there. And this guy's every single arrow is RNG. There's no patterns, there's no nothing. I actually got really great luck in general there and then somehow didn't save. So we're doing that again. Hopefully it goes as well the second time as it did the first time because that was very unfortunate. Just a massive, massive mistake. And there goes my world record. These things happen, I suppose, but they probably shouldn't. That, that's a marathon-only mistake. That's really not something that you do as a person who is good at video games. Not that I would know. <laughs> Man, you just... <laughs> you get super lucky the first time and then crushed. Sorry, guys, but... uh. We did just make about $250 for charity in the last nine <laughs> seconds, so <laughs> it's a consolation prize for myself. But I, I'm just having a real hard time with this room right now, even though it's usually not a problem at all. I'm not really sure why I'm dying. I'm really sorry, guys. Once we get out of here, 
we'll be back to the whole actually continuing throughout the game, you know? But my goal is sub 40, which is six minutes off my personal best. And I'm perfectly on pace for that. Okay. We're gonna just really just murder this save point. <laughs> no more of that. No more of that, that horribleness. So I stopped at the top of the pillar there to make the Lakitu not drop the spiny guy on me. It's didn't probably didn't even notice it. I stopped for like a tenth of a second, but it's super important to do that. In this room, the red ball mirrors your actions. If he dies, you die. And so you're actually avoiding a lot more spikes than it looks like if you're not paying attention. Now, the next boss is Mario. He is also a pretty tough fight. It's a very long fight, but I'm going to go for the quick kill, as always, because it's quicker. Okay, we just kind of lagged there for a second. Uh, that's not setting a precedent for the rest of the run. We just never lose frames again. There's actually a big problem today. I installed this game on... That's, that's dead Mario, by the way. There's some stuff you have to do the Mario, but... Uh, I installed this game on about 10 computers today. Everybody needs to do the Mario. I, uh, it, it took me 10 yes, computers to yes, find this laptop yes. that can actually run Bashi. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, this was the only computer in this entire building. Yeah, done. Of 500 yeah, people. Done. He's done. Doing the Mario. He could do it. I'm just gonna not talk unless you enjoy the, the, the scenery behind me, <laughs> just for a moment. I can't see it, but I can. <laughs> I can't see it, but I can feel them doing the Mario. So I'm just, I'm just gonna let that happen. <laughs> So that's that's a great GQ talking. He's a Twitch admin. There's a lot of little like Justin TV, Twitch TV references in this game. So you have to hit him eight times here, and if he touches you, he crushes you. Obviously, this was all added, like all that stuff at the end, because of the quick kill. He needed to add another like minute onto the fight because it was just so short with the quick kill. So this is the World Four skip. Basically, what I'm doing is. There's a save point right off the screen, and if I flip one frame before I hit it, I actually go through the floor. And then I have to go down here and make a pixel perfect jump, which I did not get. Which is one of the harder jumps in the whole game. Nope. This usually takes a few tries, unless I'm just having... Alright, I got it. So, you make a pixel perfect jump, and then you jump... Okay, I died to nothing. That's, that's a mouse glitch, I'm gonna need to use the mouse for, the, for a second here. Okay, there we go. So what happens is, the mouse cursor in this game chases and kills you while you're playing. And if you make the mouse go off the side of the screen in a certain spot, it actually kind of stays there. And it will kill you anyway, even though it's no longer present. So I actually went into an invisible mouse cursor and died. But anyway, you make a pixel perfect jump and you flip off a block you can't see. And then you literally just fall and fall and fall and we're falling. This is falling. If uh, you want to read donations, I'm falling for a little while here. All right. <laughs> Donation, actually. It's going to be about 15 seconds. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we have $35 from Cloud Killed Arareth. Uh, since I will never beat Boshi myself, I will have to live vicariously through Whitwicks. Good luck. Watch out for the spider. We went through that. Okay. And you fall and you land in the boss fight, thus skipping the entire World 4, which we have named the World 4 skip because we're geniuses. We thought that was a really good name for it. Now, the Bylanti fight is one of the easier bosses in the game. But there's a little bit of added pressure due to the fact that if you die to him, you have to do the World 4 skip again and do all the falling again. He's actually pulling me toward him right now with the blue donut thing here. So I have to jump backwards, do three shots like that. So now I'm turning off the sound. Uh, it skips a cutscene at the end of this fight and turning it back on now. You'll get... S okay, the music's back. Music comes back after your first death. This is probably the hardest room in World 5, even though it's not that bad. World 5 is a very short, straightforward world. So... Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's hard to talk in place sometimes. So, what's gonna happen in World 5 is nothing special at all. It's just a hard world. And I hope to get through it rapidly, as that will improve my time. <laughs> Thanks, bro, man. 
I'm it glad you enjoyed that. It was a solid Not joke. actual joke. <laughs> if you maybe missed the joke, he, he was implying that, that, that wasn't a joke. That was something that's going to happen. My time will be better if I use less time. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm just... This world is really just stressful to play through. So Cherno could talk about it. Because he has the third best time in the world this game. What am I talking about? <laughs> world 5. Talk about World 5. Uh... Thanks, Cherno. Wario. <laughs> and Spikes. Alright, we don't need Cherno, it's fine. He's... <laughs> he's off the couch. There's a secret character here, and there's laser <laughs> fingers. It's pretty great. Yeah, Doctor Doom is uh, off to the side. You're not gonna get to see him, unfortunately, but... World 5, like I said, there's just not too much to say about it. It's just an annoying world that I wish didn't exist. Kind of like all the worlds. This room here used to be the hardest room in the game for me. For like the first four or five months I ran the game. No one else had this problem. It's unfortunate, but I've been around now. So these guys obviously react to your, your movement. And coming up is the Sonic boss fight. And this room, which is just... Just terribly unpleasant, but that went okay. Uh, <laughs> coming up is the Sonic fight, which is actually what a lot of people get stuck on on their first playthrough. It takes most people like 10 to 20 hours to beat him once. It probably took me about seven. It took me, it's, took me 12. It's a very brutal fight, even with proper strategy and shooting. Due to the fact that Dr. Robotnik's just a jerk up there and he throws bombs at you. And, so it looks like he just goes in a circle around you, but controlling Sonic is actually probably the hardest single thing to do in this game. It takes a ton of practice to be able to get him to go around you in circles. Okay, so I actually got a really, really good Sonic. That was a great kill. So this is the eyeball, okay. That was, that was great. The eyeball is a frame-perfect jump. And the reason for that is, when Solgren was testing the game for the very first time, he did the eyeball exactly once, and he got it, and he said, okay, this is fine, and he just kind of left it. Now, I was planning on explaining more about the eyeball while I was dying to it, but we, uh, I, I crushed it, so everything's fine. We don't even need to worry about the eyeball. <laughs> and at the end of this world is one of the tougher tricks in the game. It's the Gradius skip. Basically, at the bottom of the end of World 6, there is a Gradius... Oh yeah. So, so this this that's that's it. Scare. Jump scares. Don't worry. I lied again. I'm I'm just the worst kind of person. There's definitely more jump scares. But anyway, at the end of this world, there's a Gradius ship that you have to get in, and it's about a four minute sequence. Yeah, that's gonna happen every time, but we're past it now. <laughs> there's a four minute sequence of he literally recreated the green Gradius within Bashi, like he did it himself. Which is cool, but it's a horrible, just RNG-laden, terrible, terrible thing. So, through a series of really hard save jumps, uh, you're able to just jump over it. It almost looks intentional, it's so cool how, how well the Gradius skip is set up, but he swears he didn't do it on purpose. And I believe him, because it's kind of a weird thing. Okay, so I got it. Uh, that's probably the hardest trick in the whole game, definitely. Uh, also, also, if you screw that up, what happens is your game is soft locked and you're dead. And I didn't make a backup save because I'm a cocky jerk. And fortunately, that worked out, but that could have gone really, really mercy killy if, uh, <laughs> if I didn't make that. But everything's fine. So, this is Skeleton King. He's actually a boss from Solgren's very first video game called Blob's Adventure. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> it's not a good game. It was his first game. He was like 15. He can't fault him. But anyway, he's one of the in this game. He was very nice to me this time. And he's got good, you know, CDI again and voice clips. Oh man, that was incredibly close. I'm gonna go for the quick kill here. Oh man. The simultaneous quick kill and death, that was incredibly painful. The quick kill saves about 20 seconds due to the fact that you can't hit him during the part after that. I get it about 80% of the time. 
If I just shot one bullet a little bit faster, we wouldn't be here right now. But, you know, I went for it and I paid the price. For sure. Life's hard. So, jeez. Oh my goodness. Oh. So anyway, what I was saying about the Skeleton King's RNG is those fireballs, if the boss really wants you not alive, he's going to kill you and there's nothing you can do about it. Which is why this is such a great speed game. Uh, there's a couple more bosses like that, that if they want you to lose just the most time on the planet, they will, and you can't really counteract it by playing well. It looks like he's just being the worst kind of person right now. <laughs> so I'm not going to get the quick kill. I lost about 15 damage there, but I'm alive, which, you know, thank God we're alive. That's, that's all that really matters, is that we're here together and alive. But I'm not alive, because everything is wrong with this game. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm really choking pretty hard on this boss fight, that's all there is to it. But uh, I'm, I'm ramping up that death count for the, for the charity. We're probably well over $500. If everyone stays true to their word and donates their money. I'll be donating as well at the end of the run, of course. And I think Broman is too. And that's what it's really about, right? Those good old doctors. So I'm just gonna not talk until I <laughs> get through the more annoying parts of this fight. And it lagged a bit. That's, I'm really glad that's still happening. This game doesn't run good on any computer. Well, on any computer. Because it's not a good game. <laughs> it's a fan game, and it was made in... I can't remember what the program's called, but it just doesn't run on new Windows OS's very well. So this is the slow kill, but it's... If I went for the slow kill, it would have been a lot faster than dying twice on the first attempt, so it's really not that slow. So that blue guy is actually the main character of Blob's Adventure, the aforementioned first game of Solgren. He's just making a little cameo. And after this I get to go to World 7. World 7 is based off of Mylon's Secret Castle, I want to say. But it also has DuckTales music. There's lots of cool game references in here. So I'm about to load into there. Yeah, DuckTales music, right. And uh, <laughs> so this world is one of the tougher ones. They're all one of the tougher ones. I said at the beginning of every world. Every world is one of the tougher ones. Except for world one. So these little animes try and kill you, but you just <laughs> you shoot them in their anime and you know they, they go away. That's how we do it in my chat too. Okay, so <laughs> you can lose just the most time ever there by getting animated, but we didn't have to worry about that. This is, of course, an F-Zero car, because why wouldn't it be there? Okay, the next screen is really pleasant on the eyes, so I'd recommend just staring right at it. <laughs> it's very enjoyable, like it just feels fantastic to look at this. <laughs> And then, of course, you have the Count chasing you. He, uh, you might recognize him as Dr. Robert Chase from House MD. <laughs> Sorry, this part's really just hor horribly obnoxious. All right, so I got through there just fine, but if he lands on you, it's another 20-second time loss. World 7 is the land of huge time losses. It's not a spider about to do that. And, uh, <laughs> and he's definitely not coming again. So, that's the first half of World 7. The second half is based off of Metal Gear Solid and I want to say Zelda 2 is these little lizards, but I'm just, that's what someone told me. I've never played a Zelda game in my life. So these spike jumps are just horribly painful. Everything, everything in this whole area is probably some of the most precise stuff in the entire game. So I'm just going to try and get through this as fast as I can without really talking too much about it. It's You can see what's happening, you know, on this particular part. If these guys, the lizard guys, see you, they make Metal Gear Solid noises and shoot laser beams at you. This pattern is the same every time. You do the exact same thing. But on the bottom part here, it's completely RNG based. And there's a couple things you can do to manipulate it to make it a little more manageable, but you can get walled off pretty bad here. This Reaper just shoots as much as he wants. Yeah. <laughs> that was actually a decent pattern, just a mistake. 
Yeah. So I'm through there. That's fine. There's, you know, the first time playing through the game, killer. There's a few of those where I don't really think about it, but they're guaranteed to kill you if you've never seen the game before. So on this part, I actually use my right hand to jump because it's so precise. I usually don't get through there in one try, so I'm pretty stoked about that, I suppose. And upcoming is the Mega Man boss. If I could just... I mean, darn. I mean, shucks. Aw, oh, gee willikers. What an unfortunate death. Oh, um, oh, just gosh darn it. I told you guys, I told you I wouldn't curse. People, people told me I would curse here. I don't know if, if you've ever seen my stream, you know that I maybe curse a little bit. But I got this. But I can't speak with the save points. Alright, so anyway, what I was saying was the Mega Man boss is... A really great boss and a pretty tough quick kill. Basically, I'm gonna do as much damage to him as I can here, and then when Elect Man comes down, I have to kill him as he's on his third bounce on the floor. And the Ringman quick kill is the true. Okay, I got it. The true hard part of this fight. Now it's basically just finish Mega Man off, but the Ringman part is what saves the most time. There's actually a lot more after this, but I don't have to worry about it. That's, uh... Oh my god. Oh, that's really... I wish... No, I'm just kidding. It does the cutscene whether you're alive or not, and goes to World 8. I just wanted to make it seem like I was angry or something. Everything's fine. <laughs> Roman, you having a good time back there, man? Romance having more fun than everyone else, and you should try and get to that level of enjoyment, because it sounds fantastic. So I have a backup strap for this, which involves saving in the air here, and then bouncing off these. It's, it's only a tiny bit slower than the perfect strat, but it's a lot easier. And this is, of course, based off of, I, I'm assuming, Mega Man. Uh, it's pretty, pretty darn sure it's Mega Man. And these bouncy robots are just... Very slow. I really don't like this part. It's like an auto scroller where it's incredibly easy to die. So I'm just gonna get through here in one piece, hopefully. Yeah, so what I was saying is it's very easy to die <laughs> on this auto scrolliness. This is World 8, by the way, out of 12. World 11 we kind of skip most of, and World 12 is just a prequel to the final boss fight, but overall, this is probably the uh, second hardest world behind World 10. I have a lot to explain in World 10 because there's some very special mechanics in it. But World 8 is just difficult. You could probably read some donations actually during this part. It's a little slow paced. Yeah, we have so many, so yeah, I'll go on. Thank you. So we have a $500 donation from Dagron Master. Saying good oh, game, wow. good cause. I'm happy to donate in your name, and I said I would. May the Aaron Jesus be with you. Whitwix, a rather preference. He actually pronounce, pr pronounces it Dragon Master. Yeah, but he's, he spelled it Dagron. Yeah, I know, I know. He's, he's from my stream, Moses. <laughs> Thank you, Dragon Master, for the $500. Yeah, you crazy that's person. We have uh, $100 from uh, Jeremy Cracketh Davis uh, saying, Woodwick's hype from one gaming addict to many. Keep up the good work, gents, and game on. Thank you. We have um, we have a fifty dollar donation from Yagamoth, uh, saying good luck Whitwicks. I'm really happy Boshi finally gets the run it deserves. Brutal difficulty played by a dedicated runner. Thank you, Yagamoth. Yagamoth is uh, actually one of the very first runners of this game ever, from way back in the day. He also ran Secret of Man AGDQ this year. He's great. So this is the good level design room. Um, it's a really appropriate name for it because it's just fantastic. It's definitely not just a horrible spike maze. I think it might even be sarcasm they called it that, but I can't be sure. So this is just all four of the saves in this world level are some of the toughest around. That went insanely well. <laughs> I just kind of cruised on through there, but once again, that was where I was planning on making a couple grand for the... <laughs> for the charity with my deaths. 
So, what I, oh yeah, what I'm doing there is turning off the double shot glitch because it doesn't work on this boss. I forgot to explain that, I'm sorry, that's very important. Uh, if you bind down and shoot to the same exact key, your bullets are actually stacked on top of one another, which is why you'll see me sometimes only have three bullets in the air instead of five. But it only works on about three quarters of the bosses. Now, Shang is probably the, the worst boss in the game due to this attack. It's pure RNG. Okay, never mind. I thought I was going to have a few attempts to talk about it once again, <laughs> but everything is just working. So that blood is can literally just wall you out and kill you with literally... Yeah, this, this is actually me mashing. I'm doing this. That, that was me. I'm, I told you guys, I'm really, I'm really quick. But uh, Shang is a fantastic run killer, and I'm just so glad he's around. Because you'll be world record pace, and then just a wall of blood will ruin your day. This room here is completely broken. Every, every hitbox you see me hitting is luck, because you just kind of explode sometimes by hitting the Koopas. And he's never going to fix it. Disregard the Captain Falcon in the corner, he's, he's just lonely. Yeah, see. Take out. <laughs> He'll be there, I swear. Okay, I think we're good. And you also have to kind of jump through a block at the top left here. Okay. Uh, that room, it's just completely broken. I believe Kale, the world record holder, says that's his least favorite room in the game. Because being good isn't how you get through that room. It's kind of getting a little bit lucky as well. So I'm safe restarting there to change the coin pattern to one that allows me to just not stop. So this is the last time I actually turn on the double shot glitch, it's on for the rest of the game. This fire splitty monster, he might be from something, some of you might know what he is, I don't know. Basically, okay I got it. If you split two parts of him at the same time, one of them completely disappears. So I turned about 128 small fires into maybe 16 by getting the triple split at the beginning. No one else even really goes for the triple, everyone else does too, but um, I've gotten pretty consistent at it. World 9 is hard for the wrong reasons, it's that kind of world. Sometimes these blocks go down when you're clearly jumping up, that kind of thing, but hopefully they'll just cooperate and we can continue. So the boss of World 9, there's a lot to talk about in this fight. It's Ganon, spoilers, from The Legend of Zelda. And he's just a real mess of a fight. I mean, you'll see soon enough. We're one room away. But basically what I'm going to have to do is get him to spawn low. And then pretty much do absolutely nothing and he'll die. For the most part. He's right up there, so we'll be there in a moment. I'm going to need serious time for this room. If everyone could just... Okay. <laughs> Alright, so the Ganon fight. The Ganon fight, if he spawns on the ground... Okay, he spawned low enough. There's actually a testing button left in the game by the developer, where if I hit one, he keeps starting the same attack over and over again. I just mash one, and he just says your face will die hundreds of times, and you just get to burn him down. It's really useful, because I don't like fighting bosses. So, that's Ganon. I hope you enjoyed the fight. That was a really good time. Alright, World 10 is legitimately the hardest world in the game for a few reasons. First of all, it has these Ninja Gaiden wall jumpy panels which affect your speed, and you need to maintain speed through a lot of the level. Second of all, if you can get through the first half of the level without dying, you skip about a 30 second obstacle. That can just be really frustrating, and if you can get through the second half, you save another like 35 seconds. So what I'm going to try to do here is not die, but you know I've, I've kind of been trying to do that, and it's with varying results. But it's actually way more important to not die in World 10 than anywhere else. Okay, it looks like I'm going to get the first skip, unless I make... I shouldn't talk yet. I'm just going to not say anything. For one sec. Okay, so, oh, whoa, 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 I'm the last obstacle. So that red wall on the right side there would not be there had I not just jumped into a discus throwing guy. But now I have to go down here. 
it's not a huge deal on the first one. The second one's much more time saving. But this is actually a pixel perfect gap just put there to frustrate you. Luckily, nothing bad happened. This is another one of the tougher rooms in the game due to this little corner jump here. Never mind, everything's fine. <laughs> I really keep thinking I'm gonna have more time to explain these things due to dying, but. Okay, so that's the RNG shuriken room. It does that occasionally, and you lose the second skip, and there's literally nothing you can do about it. They'll spawn just at the top right, and you actually just can't exit the room, and you die. So the second skip's already lost. I actually talked to Sogren once, and he said he was considering taking out the right three spawn points for those, but I guess he just never got around to it, which is cool, because I like when RNG makes the game <laughs> just less fun. It's my kind of game. So this is the Rio Hayabusa skip. Basically you get out ahead of his shurikens and you can jump right over. It's actually like a 35 second avoidance battle. And skipping him is actually easier than fighting him. It's, it's such a hard fight. Over here I have to maintain my speed the entire time. If I bump a wall or just let go of anything and stop running full speed, I lose it. Luckily I made it the first time. So this spike wall will just hunt you down. Basically, had I gotten the first skip, or the second skip, sorry, I will show you what would have happened and why it saves 25 seconds. But I didn't get it because of the shuriken room. Everything else went well. So basically, this red wall on the left would not be here, and I could literally just walk left. But what I have to do now is wait for this uh, wall to spin around a bit, you know, assert dominance and whatnot. And then go hit this switch on the right side to destroy it. Which, that was actually a great world 10 regardless of whether I got the skips or not, because I think it was only three deaths. The next boss is um, Missing No from, from Pokemon. <laughs> Might have heard of him. Basically, this is the worst offender of all when it comes to boss RNG. He has 10 attacks, and you only want to see three of them ever in your life. Rock throw is the one you want to see least, because that happens. That. <laughs> That's exactly why. And you only see rock throw in like one out of maybe 20 fights, but I knew I was going to see it today, <laughs> because that's what happens, you know? That's, that's life. Don't, don't let anyone tell your life's okay, it's terrible. So hyper beam's okay, it's kind of a weak attack, it's, you don't get much time to deal damage to him, but it's solid. If I get... of course. So anyway, what I was saying, worst two attacks, rock throw confusion. <laughs> which have been three out of the five attacks we've seen so far, which is just fantastic. Splash is the absolute best starting attack for a missing no fight, because if it's followed up by recover, I can actually just straight up kill him with some really good mashing. Razor Leaf is another <laughs> just terrible attack, because it takes a long time, and I get to hit him exactly with seven bullets. Some attacks let you hit him, oh my goodness. Try attack is the longest attack in the entire game. <laughs> About 25 seconds of just trash. I was really just hoping I would get get the god missing no, you know, but of course that wouldn't happen in a marathon run. <laughs> wow, man. He's really in a mood today. <laughs> yeah, rock throw. <laughs> I'm just gonna restart until I get a decent attack. <laughs> because it's not worth going through a confusion first fight. This is what speedrunning this game is like, by the way. This is, this is not bad luck, this is just what it's like. <laughs> just do recover. You're, you're not a good person, missing one. Hydro Pump is a decent attack. I would, I would call it neutral, if we're talking like positive, negative, neutral. You get a decent amount of damage in, and it's basically impossible to die to. So, one more attack and he should be dead. I think I can kill him off a of Hyper Beam. I'm gonna jump at him to do some extra damage and pray. Yeah, so we're good. If you kill yourself at the end of that fight, um, it starts. It starts a cutscene or a little bit earlier and actually saves you about four seconds. Now, World 11 has a cool trick. It's called save hovering, which is you might have guessed it. This. Um, what happens is you spawn at a zero comma zero location in this game, and then you get moved to your actual position one frame later. So if you spawn yourself while holding shoot and jump, you're actually firing a bullet 
and the zero zero location in World Eleven is right next to a save point. So you're hitting a save on the second frame and gaining a tiny bit of altitude due to your jump, which is just awesome. It's a really cool trick, and it saves probably about five minutes. We do it twice. I do it to skip the boss of World Eleven entirely, which is not a boss. It's just a really long platforming section with good music. But you, you don't want to see that. That was actually um, going to be the incentive to do the tower, but it's terrible. You don't you don't need that. So if I can maintain my speed here, which I didn't, you can kind of cruise through this whole area to the to the right side. So these panels, if you don't go the direction they're facing, you just kind of explode. Standard stuff. The white block coming up, if you shoot it, you get a small jump. So you need to use you need to use it to get triple jumps. And then these red blocks here give you a massive jump. And same concept. There's three red blocks coming up, and you have to hit them pretty precisely to get enough altitude. Like the acceleration from these blocks stacks, and you can actually like kind of jump way, way high. And then coming up is the next save hover. This one actually skips the tower, which is probably the, I want to say the biggest skip in the game. Although the Gradius skip is pretty great too. And the World 4 skip, they're all great. I love skips. I don't, I don't even want to play the game. World 11 clear. Um, now this is Solgren's tower. Solgren is the final boss of the game. If you're Danish, you might know what Solgren is. If you're American, you probably have no idea or from anywhere else for that matter. It means sun grain. It is a brand of oatmeal in Denmark. And the last boss is in fact a bottle, or sorry, a box of Solgren. Because I guess Solgren himself thought that was hilarious. Which it kind of is, I guess. But a lot of people think he's like cigarettes or salt, but no. So this is the final boss of the game. He's literally a box of oatmeal. But it's the toughest box of oatmeal you'll ever fight in a video game. I guarantee it. I will put money on that. That you will never fight a harder box of oatmeal. So phase one is super quick if you kill him. What I'm going to try to do here is get him to zero health. Okay, I got him. So now I need to use these green things to break his shield. This is the hardest part of the entire game, I would say. Phase two of Solgren. Due to the fact that it's... Once again, laden with RNG. Are you noticing a pattern here, by the way? Just RNG bosses. Yeah, a lot of fun. But uh, it's full of RNG, and if, it, if you take it to a three cycle, you lose about 30 seconds. It's possible to one cycle him in phase two, but it's based on pure luck, basically. Okay. So I'm just going to try and get through this quietly. There's not much to say, I just need to focus. Oh, I almost one cycled him. Wow. We're about, I'd say 0.6 seconds of, of shield away from the one cycle. That would have been fantastic. I've gotten it about six times ever, and for reference I've finished about 450, 500 runs of this game. So it's very rare to get a one cycle on Solgren Phase 2. Yeah. Wow. So that's phase two done. Yeah. Now he has zero HP. So what I need to do is survive to phase four and he'll just die. It's a bunch of throwbacks to the other boss fights. There's some RNG like this car, which he was being nice today. Thanks. Then we got Mario, of course, Violante, you know, the gang's all here. Uh, we got another round of Shang blood, but... It usually... Oh man, that was really close. Okay, that's the last one, I swear. <laughs> There's literally no time left for jump scares, so we're done with them. And then we got Fat Sonic, who's just really cool, I guess. And I actually killed him, like, it, it's definitely over. There's really no way to die here. I shouldn't say things like that, but... I'm, there's literally, like, this is it. So get ready with time, because... I'm about to say time in a moment. And that's how you become the Bashi in, I'm going to say 44 minutes. Time.
time. Well, that was a good guess. You uh, nailed the guess. It felt like 44. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, did my donation incentive get met? Yeah, there are many donations. <laughs> yeah, it did. All right. Uh, we have $80 from Amazon Ryzen, uh, saying $20 for every wacky wobbler. Put it all towards Mario Kart 64 for more wobbler action. Uh, we, we had uh, $140 from uh, Wolfric the Red saying, Tell Broman if my math is right, this is 300 total for SGDQ. <laughs> $200 from Kleiser saying, It's Boshi time. It was Boshi time. <laughs> and so many, so many more actually. Um, Big Miller saying, Good luck on the run with Wix. Shout out to Fi Fi, Caleb, and Broman on the couch. Putting this toward MK, MK64. Fi Fi hype. $20 from, $20 from Gyro Meister saying, Keep it up, guys. You're incredible. What? Merci for organizing hey, such a unique okay. event. So I guess uh, we're going to do my donation incentive now. Yes. Uh, the credit music is nice, but uh, it's pretty long. And I'm just going to head on into my donation incentive. My donation incentive was to kill the Kappa boss. You might have heard, it, heard of it if you've been on Twitch TV before. It's uh, one of them emote things. So in World 3, if you get an item called the Cake in World 5, you get this stupid companion cube thing. And you can jump across here. And in the back, there's a secret world, which takes you to the Justin TV world. This game is old, keep that in mind. Takes you to Bashi Time's actual channel, and we've got chat. Always fun. <laughs> Rip chat. <laughs> Rip chat. Yeah, right? Rip chat. Rip chat. <laughs> so we just kind of have to ride the chat up. We'll be there in a moment. You have to go up two screens, and then there's some double jump replenishers off to the side. And that will take you there. Let's go back down. He could have made this one screen shorter, and I wouldn't have been like mad about it. You know, it's it's a bit excessive, but you know, once you're up there, you're up there. So now we go off to the left here. The Justin TV world is incredibly short, mind you, as is the boss fight at the end of it. So you have to jump onto his logo here and jump to live channels. Then you actually have to click on search, and then you can save your game, and you enter the Kappa room. with some cool sonic music. <laughs> and, uh... Oh, yeah. You're right. I was supposed to use the Frank or Z character. Mistakes were made. Well, it's too late now. I'm sorry, Frank or Z character. Unless I die here. Phase 2 of Kappa is the only part that can kill you. Well, okay, that's not true at all, but it's the only part that's likely to if you're going to die and the reigning emotes are also a bit of a problem. It's a very short fight. He's actually dead right now. And that's the end of that. So... <laughs> and then chat goes crazy because, you know, why wouldn't they? Then the music stops. So that's about it for my run. I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I'm just going to leave that on, and I'm going to head out. I hope you enjoyed the run, you know, feel free to stop by my stream sometime. Thank you, Broman, Caleb, Cherno, Fire Jack. You look adorable, Fire Jack. <laughs> Dime, thank you all for being here. <laughs> Not exactly the time I was looking for, but it went pretty well.